Welcome to Moments with Marianne. Allow me to interrupt your train of thought with something that may be one of the most interesting things you hear today. This is Marianne Pastana, and we're here today with special guest Robbie Holes, and she's here to share with us her new book, Angels in Waiting How to Reach Out to Your Guardian Angels and Spirit Guides. Now, Robbie is an internationally respected healer, medium, media guest, and an award winning co author whose books have been read in 43 countries. She's dedicated to continuing the healing work that both her and her late husband Gary started, including their research into the mystic life of remote Australian Aboriginal tribespeople and their 60,000 year old healing principles. So let's welcome to the show, Robbie Holes. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you know, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about your new book. I have to ask you, like, what inspired you to write this? You know, I think it's because, well, I know it's because working with angels and guides, benevolent spirit guides on the other side have tremendously changed my life for the better. And it's such a powerful, uh, game-changing thing that I just knew this information needed to get out there to as many people as I could because it's tr- it's amazing help that's, um, can dramatically change somebody's life. And I just thought people aren't accessing this and it's available to them and they just don't know how. And so that's why I, you know, put this book together to get this information out. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was doing a little research because I'm always curious about these kind of things. And, you know, there are all these polls that are out there that talk about how many people believe in angels in the U.S. And, you know, I was surprised to find that it was like, you know, 70% more, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it is it, it is a very high percentage, not just in the United States, but also around the world and has been throughout the ages. It also, I think what's if you do some research, you'll find that uh, over half the people believe that angels have protected them from harm in some ways. So there's an awareness and they and people are starting to see that they are helping and protecting. And it just, there's, there's more to that, but I just want that out there that, yeah, this is a common thing. It's not, it, what I love, Marianne, is when I start talking to people about angels, everybody has a story. Everybody's got a story. It's just that most people don't, you know, talk about it. Yeah, usually that's saved for like close personal friends or family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I I I agree. I mean, I believe in angels. I believe I have a guardian angel, and I believe he he's he or she's probably like worn out. So you know. <laughs> They're exhausted. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, you may not look at this one. Good, what's she going to do next? You know? When's the replacement coming in? Yeah, yeah. I, I need to. I need a timeout. It's interesting. So we have so many people that are interested in angels. How do they start developing that? That you know that relationship with them and develop communication. Well, you bring up a couple of good points there about how do you start developing this relationship, especially for people who don't know that they're there. So let me just start out by saying that every single person on the planet has at least one guardian angel by their side, um, whether they believe in them or they're, you know, think about them or even know whether they exist or not. Every single person has at least one angel by their side from their first breath to their last breath. You always have an angel, an angelic presence by you. So most people, I think, get hung up on communicating with them. And they think that because they start communicating to the angels that they're going to start seeing them or hearing them. And then they get frustrated when that doesn't happen and they think they're not being answered or they're not being, you know, they're not making that connection. Every single person is clairsentient, where you feel the guidance with your body. Uh, You know, you have that gut instinct, that intuition, that that solar plexus is where you really, that feeling is more intensified. But very few people are actually programmed or wired or to see them or hear them. 
But the communication is easiest with the guardian angel. It's designed to be easiest with the guardian angel. And you can ask the guardian angel to help you develop that connection with them, to deepen that connection with them. This is a free will planet. They won't just intervene beyond the guardianship role, which is that they are there to make sure that you're not harmed or killed or experience something that your soul does not intend in that moment. That's where, you know, I was talking about earlier that a lot of people have experienced that. That was the guardian angel stepping in. They have permission to step in in that role to make sure you're not harmed or killed or experience something your soul does not intend for you to go through at that moment. But beyond that role, that role, they need us to ask them to help them because it's a free will planet. They won't they, they honor our, our free will. They won't just intervene because, you know, that's, this is part of the learning process and um, even pain can be a, a powerful catalyst or teacher. So we need to ask for their assistance. But once you ask, Marianne, this is the cool part. They always respond. They just may not respond the way your mind wants it to in the timing or the way, but they will respond and they will respond In two ways, they will respond according to the highest and best good of all. And what is your soul's intention? So you can say, for instance, especially now with what's happening with COVID and and a lot of people have insecurity financially, you can say, thank you for helping me win the lottery, but they won't do that if it's not your soul's intention, which it probably isn't, but they can bring you abundance in other ways, but they have to be asked, invited to assist you first, but they really want to help. I think that's so inspiring to have, you know, these helpers with us. And that's probably why you hear people go, gosh, I had this really close call and, and, you know, an accident or something. And it's just, you know, their angels protecting them. Yes, absolutely. You know, I've had a number of experiences happen to me when I was, before I was even aware of angels, and I just knew something happened. I don't know what that was about, but that certainly wasn't me when I almost walked into traffic um, and something pulled me back, physically pulled me back, but there was no one else there that I could see. You know, almost fell down the stairs when my shoe got caught in the carpet at the top of the steps. Something physically pulled me back. Those are the guardian angels that intervene in those cases. Well, I can understand that. I've had one that saved me from a head-on collision and another down the stairs as well, you know, that actually pushed me back up. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Did you know at the time what it was? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because, I mean, I was was forward falling. It was going to be bad and ugly, and I was holding a box (laughs) of glass. You know, oh. so it's going to be even worse than bad. Yeah, you know? that was a that was an overachiever moment there. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I say my angels like, oh boy, I need yeah. a break. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let me let me say this because we joked about this earlier, but angels don't have those kinds of emotions. Because I get this from people, they're like, oh, my angels must be so frustrated with me, or they must be losing patience. They don't have those kinds of emotions. They're serving us out of tremendous love. In fact, it's a love that is so strong. Let me assure everyone here that the angels love us more than we can possibly comprehend as humans. It is beyond our human comprehension. The love is so intense. And this is why they are here to serve us, to help us. They will step in and intervene when we've asked. Uh, They will assist us with great, great, small, uh, big, vague, specific, it doesn't matter, but we need to ask. And this is what I love about this, Marianne, because they're serving us out of tremendous love. Every time we allow them to help us, because they're serving out of love, it allows them to grow. So it's this beautiful win-win symbiotic relationship where every time we allow them to help us, it allows them to grow. And they've told me that asking for their assistance ramps it up, can ramp it up from if you are thinking of like we're operating at five amps of power on our own, with their help, it shifts up to 5,000 amps of power. That's huge. That's what I'm excited about. This is what I'm trying to tell people is if you allow them to help you, it will transform your life in the best way. You have no idea how much help is available waiting to assist, especially now in these times. We've never had this level of assistance, but we've also probably never needed it to this level either. Yeah, we're, what they say, it's, uh, we're living in a very interesting times. Yeah, yeah. 
it's something to, you know, I think approach with compassion because man, we really need it right now. Yeah. Compassion for us. This is not an easy uh, planet. Um, it's, and it's certainly not an easy time right now, but we're here for a reason. And so we're here to add more love, to add more enlightenment, a higher consciousness, a higher frequency and vibration. And I've been doing consultations with people for a long, long time. And what I'm seeing that's been trending for me in the last six months or a year is I'm getting younger and younger people coming to me who are in their, their um, like 19, in their 20s, saying, um, and they have amazing abilities, saying, I know I'm here to help, but I don't know what to do. But their abilities are off the charts compared to, you know, some of us older people who worked many, many years to attain this. They're just coming in very different, very enlightened. So there's a lot of help that's coming in, and they're coming in very different to help achieve this higher, uh, greater consciousness, higher awakening, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, that's that that place where we really are all striving, I think, in one way or another to get to. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll get, and let me, let me put this out there because I think this is, I know it certainly made me feel better about this. The guides and angels have been telling me that, you know, I'm 67 and I have a six-year-old grandson and they're saying that a lot of the changes that we want to see will happen in my six-year-old grandson's lifetime. Um, some of those changes will happen in my 36 year old son's lifetime. Some, but not a lot of them will happen in my lifetime at 67, but the, the, you know, it'll take a couple generations, but we're getting there. And a lot of us are like the, you know, we're a couple generations ahead of what we want to see, but we are the path makers. We are creating that, um, the beginning of the bell curve, so to speak. So that's why it's important to, you know, pay attention to, am I operating in fear or am I operating in love? Because we don't want to add more fear and angst to the planet. We, we are here to add the vision of peace and harmony and hold that and, and hold that energy. And this is where when you ask the angels to help you do that, they can help you do that. Because the mind is a powerful tool, but it tends to get stuck on these things. And it also doesn't necessarily know how to do these things. It doesn't know how to be the best parent, how to find the best career, how to find and be the best partner. But a higher consciousness can help you do that. And the angels can help you do that. If they have, again, those two things, it's the highest and best good of all, and it's your soul's intention. But it usually is because to operate from love and to operate from a more joyful place is usually in everyone's best interest. Thank goodness for that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for the most part, they probably do have the green light to assist you and help you. And that is a good thing because it's a, this, what's happening and I'm sure you're aware, and a lot of the listeners are too, this is a grassroots change. It's not happening from the top down. It's happening from the bottom up. And it's happening worldwide, one by one, around the planet. But we're just not hearing about it. But I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it who's coming to me. I'm seeing it in many different ways. And I'm sure you are too. We're seeing those changes happening. How remarkable that is that you get to see that progress happen. I know while a lot of people are feeling that, it's not something that most of us can really tune into. Do you know, I I would love for you to share a little bit about your late husband with us, because I think, you know, I'm correct in saying this, that he was such a huge impact in the work that the both of you did together. Mm -hmm. I would just love for you to share with our listeners about him. Gary was a physicist. He was an award-winning, highly respected physicist, and he had MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, and he was actually a quadriplegic. And he had about six months left to live. And he, you know, the doctors didn't have anything for him. This was back in '94, and so he's a um, very tenacious, intelligent man. And he did his research and found out that the remote outback Aboriginal people in Australia have remarkable healing abilities. He contacted them and that's, we put all this information in the book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, because it's a pretty interesting story how he was able to contact a member of the tribe and actually went as cargo in his, unloaded his cargo in his wheelchair into the remote outback near Ayers Rock, um, Uluru. And he spent a little bit of time with the uh, Aboriginal tribe and he 
and you have to remember, this is a scientist. Everything is pretty much black and white. It doesn't exist unless you can prove it, right? There's no gray area for him. Well, he came out of the outback a uh, short time later, really transformed in, in a number of ways. Um, he regained feeling in his body for the first time in seven years, became a uh, paraplegic. But I think the biggest transformation was his emotional um, one and that he realized that his emotions are connected to the physical body. You cannot separate them. And he had had a really challenging life as a, he was, as a child, he was beaten by his alcoholic father and he was really good at learning to numb himself emotionally to the point where he numbed himself physically. And the Aboriginal people taught him that the difference and helped him learn to forgive his father. And as he did that, he started regaining motion in his body again. And what was really astonishing about that is that the Aboriginal tribes people gave him their healing secrets. They, they have been, they're the oldest continuous culture on the planet. And I'm talking about the remote outback uh, people who are very isolated from civilization or other people. I mean, the outback goes on forever. It's quite extensive and it's very easy to be isolated out there, but they have passed down their knowledge and their healing secrets for at least 60,000 years minimum. That's a huge length of time. And they gave this information to Gary because they knew that he would be able to take this information out because he had credibility. And because we really needed it, we didn't understand how the body, mind, soul is connected to wellness. And that what they taught him, and we would describe this in the book, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, is how if you have, for instance, um, the emotional core, the emotional root to that, it's like a dandelion. If you just pick the top of it, it's just going to grow right back again. So you can have, for instance, tumors removed, but they'll come right back again if you're not getting to the emotional root of it and releasing the emotional root. For Gary, it happened to be this numbing himself physically to this really traumatic childhood that he had had with his abusive, abusive alcoholic father. And so he had to recognize that there was an emotional core, uproot it and let it go. And so that's what happened. And then we put this book together and he lived for another, I think, 12 years. He, he went into the outback in 94. And even though the doctors had told him he had about six months to live, he passed in 2007. And, um, and, and I put this book out about his journey into the outback, Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, out into the world, really an honor for him. And I was quite shocked to see that it resonated with people all over the world because now it's in at least 43 countries because it just people can connect to the truth. They can feel it. So it's taken off like I never expected. But uh, it, that's the beautiful part is that the Aboriginal people wanted us to get this information out. And it has really taken root around the world. People recognize, yes, Western medicine, at least that we have in the past, tended to just um, you know, address the physical symptoms and not addressing quite often the emotional core. So it, let me give you another example. If, fibromyalgia, um, I actually experienced fibromyalgia and I healed it myself, but I had to recognize that fibromyalgia is like a, it's an autoimmune disease, but it affects the whole system. And more and more people are coming down with fibromyalgia. It used to just be a woman's disease, quote unquote. Now it's men and it's also teenagers are getting it. What fibromyalgia is, is the original, the emotional core to that is it's system-wide fear. It's throughout the whole system. So if you keep creating this fear and you don't release it, um, you, you, it's, it's like the, the emotions, if it's uncomfortable emotionally, I guarantee it's affecting the body. So when you have those emotions that are fear-based or negative, it's like that dashboard on a car blinking, warning you. And if you keep doing it and you ignore it and you don't do anything about those emotions, then that light, that dashboard starts to stay lit all the time. And that's now a physical disease. So you got to go back and find out what that is. So we put all that information that those that they beautifully, generously gifted to us to help people understand how healing really happens. Well, thank you for taking the time to go over that because it, the tie-in I have, especially with your book Angels in Waiting, is I you know I understand that your husband is also part of the spirit guides that works with you. <laughs> 
<laughs> he is. He is. So uh, here's what happened to me, Marianne. I didn't. I didn't know this was coming. But I, I suppose if we knew it was coming, we would uh, hide under the sheets. I when he passed in 2007, um, he would show up every morning at eight o'clock. He was always a very punctual man, and he would show up. If I closed my eyes, I could see the energy from him, and it was a distinct pattern. And he would show up at eight o'clock, not. 7:59 and not 8:01. It was always 8 o'clock, except one year in the spring when the time changed and he was an hour off. But I think he did that on purpose as a joke. So he showed up every single morning for months, and that's when I started to wake up to connecting to him on the other side and learning how to do that. And when Gary was in the outback, the Aboriginal people, the ones that he was around, they're operating at what I would call fifth dimensional existence. It's a higher vibration. It's a higher frequency where they can see on the other side of the veil. They can communicate to the other side of the veil. And when Gary was with them, they helped him develop that ability as well, awaken it in him so that he became able to see his uh, the angel that he called Julie all the time. He would communicate to her hours on end every day. He started to be able to see into the body like the Aboriginal people could. He started to become telepathic to people and animals. And I thought it was interesting that the ones who could tell he was communicated to them telepathically were autistic. They don't have those filters and they always knew when he was communicating to them because I would get, um, you know, we had a friend who had an autistic son that Gary would help. And she called me and said, you know what, I have to tell you, my son is just laughing, saying Gary is such a funny guy because they're having this conversation telepathically. And this is what the aboriginals taught him. And they taught us, we used to be telepathic. And then when we started speaking out loud, we lost those telepathic abilities. They've never lost that. They've always stayed, the, the remote Aboriginal people have always stayed telepathic so that they can communicate to the water, to the herbs, to, the, to each other, and to the animals. And Gary started developing that ability when he came back from the outback. And the Aboriginal people, uh, they will tell you that speaking out loud is very chaotic, which it is. Um, and, and this is how I develop that ability then to communicate to the angels where it's this telepathy and it you can download a lot of information in just a split second versus speaking word for word for word for word you know i hear a lot of times when people get that intense download it may take a few days to kind of have it, everything integrate that can be the case too. It, it, when I do sessions with people, I do a, a consultation with them and I get a, just a download of information because they want this information to be given to that person. And it, it, it just makes me realize that it's just so much more efficient and quick to have that telepathic uh, insight rather than, it kind of reminds me of somebody writing something out and they have to write one letter at a time. It's a very slow process to write every single thing out. And that's kind of how speaking out loud is the same way. Yeah, it's just kind of showing, showing what's there, and that's a, that's a thing. I think some people go, "Well, gosh, you know, you must be really gifted." I don't know if I can do that, but I know your book. You you share with people how they can. That that was, that was the purpose of Angels in Waiting is because people were getting stuck on they were think they they weren't being heard or they didn't know how to develop that connection or develop that ability. Every person is wired to be able to communicate to them through clairsentience that body. They communicate through telepathy. They can hear, they're aware of your thoughts. So you simply communicate to them with your thoughts. You don't have, you can speak out loud if you want to, but they're aware of your thoughts. One of the ways that I know it's them responding is they'll answer a question before I finished asking it in my head. They know what I'm going to ask, right? So that's another way for that I've just picked up over time on that communication. But Ask them to help you develop that ability. Ask them to help you pick up on their guidance more easily. They won't just guide you. They'll also help you. They will help create. They don't have the limitations we do. They know how to get you there um, without quite so much struggle and pain. If you go where your soul wants you to go, you're going to love where it takes you. But a lot of us have resistance to that. But if you allow the angels to help you, they can help you recognize what your soul intends for you to learn in this lifetime and to help you learn it, to help you master that. And also they can help you guide you with your career or relationships that your soul knows are in your best interest to have or what you're really good at and how to do that. They can help you in so many ways. It's 
endless, but they have to have permission first. They have to have you ask. It's that they've given me this vision, Marianne, of somebody reaching up for assistance. When that hand goes up for assistance, their hand always comes down. The hand has to go up first to ask for help before they can, uh, because they have laws that they're governed by. But once we've asked, they always respond. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Robbie Holes in regards to her new book, Angels in Waiting. We'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. The highly acclaimed and newly released book, The Hand Part 2 by Lynn Van Prague Grattan, describes the journey between a psychic medium and a family who lost a son. Messages from Beyond Eternity's Gate is of love and healing. For more information, visit www.lynnvanprague-grattan.com. That's www.lynnvanprague-grattan.com. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with our special guest, Robbie Holes, and she's sharing with us her new book, Angels in Waiting. I know we were talking about how angels help us. A lot of times I hear people saying, gosh, I don't feel like I'm being heard by them. But I don't think they realize that this is really developing a relationship and we've got to put in some time in that. Yeah, and release expectations. The two things that I tell people when you hand things over and ask them for help, you have to let go of how and when, right? That's a control thing that the mind wants to know. How am I going to get there and when am I going to get there? Let go because they will not force anybody to do anything. We are working with beautiful, benevolent beings here who honor free will. They will guide you. They will nudge you, but they will never force you to do anything. And so they will guide you towards the... You know, when things, for instance, when they, I asked, you know, what was the highest vision of my soul? And they said to get a couple of books published. I about felt, I just couldn't believe it. I was shocked because I hate writing. I've never written a thing. I've never had a class on it. But with their help, now I have just finished four books. And the first two, like I said, are in over 43 countries. Because with their assistance, I could do this. There's no way my mind would know how to do that or be able to do that without their help. But it was my soul's intention for this to happen. So with their help, I was able to do that. And I know I have one more in me. It is a child's book. I can't wait to see what that's going to be. But I know that my mind is a powerful tool designed to follow the intuitively the guidance from the other side. And that's how, that's the difference. Well, I can't wait to see the children's book. I'm sure that's going <laughs> to be. I'm sure that's going to be too. amazing. <laughs> well, and you know, and I think a lot of times people get a little confused when we talk about angels and spirit guides. I mean, mm-hmm. I'd love for you to kind of just, ex- you know, share on how yeah. those are different. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because there is a difference. So the guardian angels are always by your side. One, sometimes two, and don't read into whether you have two that you're exhausting one, (laughs) like we talked about earlier. And sometimes they have a feminine energy and sometimes they have a male presence energy energy to them. But the guardian angels are assigned to you for each lifetime in this particular lifetime. You have other angels that come and go, okay? Angels do not need to live the human experience. They're so 
far beyond this earth school, if you will. They don't need to. They can briefly take on a human form, and and many people have reported that, but it's not that they need to go through the experience of having a whole human lifetime. Spirit guides, on the other hand, have had many lifetimes to the point where they are highly evolved, highly evolved, and they have chosen to come back and be of service to those who need them. So they will come in and out of your life, depending on what you're doing. If I'm writing a blog or an article, I will get a different, quite often I'll get a different spirit guide who will come through depending on what I'm writing. And then I may never work with them again. And it's, you know, if you have a, a, a child who has special needs, you might get a spirit guide who comes in and assists with you, or even an ancestor or a loved one to assist with that. And you can even have ancestors that you've never met before, you know, a great, great grandmother, for instance, who comes in and kind of checks on in on you and guides you, and you've never even met them in this physical lifetime. So, so there's, I, I put all that information in the book because I think people tend to think that, you know, when their loved ones pass over, that they become their guardian angel or they become their spirit guide. That's not the case because they're not as evolved enough yet to be the spirit guide. And again, the spirit guides are serving us out of tremendous love. So when we ask them, invite them to help us, that allows them the opportunity to serve out of love and which allows them to grow and evolve as well. When we look at spirit guides and angels, typically how many do people have? You know, it depends who they are, what they're doing. I run into people who uh, have amazing teams. Um, I call them teams, spirit teams on the other side, because of what they're they're doing. Um, it, it, you might have... You really don't need to go beyond the spirit, your guardian angel, um, you know, but there are others that come in and go. It's not uncommon for somebody to have um, a spirit guide pop in and out of their life, depending on what's going on. Uh, sometimes they will have loved ones who are will check in with them, but everybody always has an angelic presence by them in the form of a guardian angel. Yeah, but I do see people who have, um, like my team that I work with, when I do consultations, they step forward and Gary's part of that team, including Aboriginal healers are part of that team and archangels and an ascended master and angels. That's the basic team that I work with when I do a consultation, but they're not necessarily by my side all the time, but I, it, they do show up when I do consultations. So, you know, that's the same thing with other people. I know, I'm sure, Marianne, that you have help that comes in when you do your programs because it's affecting many people in a very beautiful way. So you probably, I'm sure, have your own team that steps in when you're doing your recordings. I can uh, use all the help I can get. So yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's real encouraging to hear that. And I, and I feel like people are like, well, I don't know if I have spirit guides or guardian angels because, you know, you get people who are a little skeptic and yeah. it's not until they have like an experience that, you know, yeah, being ready to fall downstairs and all of a sudden you're being propped back up doesn't make any sense. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might not know what that's about, but let me just, let me say this though. Every person is worthy of assistance. Every person is designed to have this assistance. It's just up to you whether you choose to use it or not. It's a free will planet. But this is why the guides and angels asked me to write the last two books, which have been about angels and and guides and how to get help from them. Because, And this is what they actually told Gary when he was coming back from the outback is, please tell people to ask us to help them more because they're not really taking advantage of this tremendous help that's available to them. Like I said, it's a game changer. That's That was why I was just passionate about getting this information out is it's available to you, but you've got to ask for it because it's a free will planet. It's not unlike, I use this example in the book because I think it's a perfect story about example of how it's like a child wanting to learn how to tie their laces and they might make a big tangled mess in the process of learning how to tie those shoes. And that's just part of the learning process. There's nothing wrong with that. But when that child turns to the parent and asks for them to help teach them how to tie their laces, then that wise parent steps in and assists them in the way that's appropriate. And it's the same thing here. They are very patiently waiting to assist us, but waiting for us to ask because they know that sometimes the pain, the struggle is part of the learning process. 
pain is a really powerful teacher. It's a powerful catalyst. But a lot of us are creating a lot more pain and struggle than we need to. It doesn't need to be this hard. Our souls didn't intend it to be this hard. And it, our souls intended for us to have a lot of help. We were never designed to be doing this alone. So when you're meeting with people, because I know you're, you know, my goodness, you're so highly gifted at the work that you do. <laughs> what, what is one area where you see people really kind of get stuck the most? That's a great question that nobody's ever asked me before. This is why I put we put this book together, Angels in Waiting, where we talk about the things that I saw people typically getting hung up on, where they were getting stuck with careers, relationships, other people's choices, um, the self-love for themselves. I think the biggest challenge for people tends to be when loved ones make decisions that they feel are very poor, unhealthy decisions. And they have a really hard time with it and they want to control, they want to help, they want to rescue. And it's about recognizing that you have these soul contracts to, for instance, a child. I think that's one of the hardest is to have a child that is now an adult that's making choices that you know are affecting them in a, a very unhealthy way. Um, and I'm not promoting bad behavior, especially that uh, impacts other people. But what I am saying is that they have signed up for this. Their soul typically wants them to go through these experiences. And you have agreed a soul contract to love them and not judge them. Okay, that's the difference is everyone, we're all equal as souls, but we're at different levels of involvement and growth. Some people are really mastered forgiveness. Other people are still learning acceptance. So, you know, it's, I've heard, you know, my guys have told me, you might get a soul who chooses to experience powerlessness through opiate addiction, because that's a very effective way to learn about powerlessness. And, it, and you take this information with you forward into the other lifetimes. It helps you evolve and grow. So maybe you have signed up to have a soul agreement where you have a son or a daughter who has chosen to become an addict or an alcoholic, and you again, like the guides, they and the angels, they will respect our choices and not intervene unless it's necessary on a soul level. And we are here to love them and not judge them. They're not broken. They don't need to be fixed. This is what they're here experiencing. We need the light and the shadow in us and on this planet to create that, the contrast, the diversity that helps us grow so much faster on this planet. That's the thing, Marianne. On the other side of the veil, things are in perfection and it's stagnant for growth purposes. So we come here to this free will planet, which is a tough planet. You've got to be brave to come here, but we come here because we learn really fast. And so the shadow on this planet provides opportunities that we don't have on the other side. So you get to also, as an etheric spirit, a soul, when you come to planet Earth, you get to have a physical body, which is a gift. It may not always feel like it, but it's a gift. But you also get a wider range of emotions than you have on the other side. You get to experience impatience, frustration, depression, anxiety, stress. You get to feel that and experience that because it helps you grow so much faster, much more effectively, exponentially. Yeah, it lets us have, you know, at least follow our path as a soul. We have all these things we want to accomplish, you know. Yeah. So, so it's... You know, if you have a child or an adult child, it's different when you have children, but when you have a, a, a child that is now an adult making decisions that you're challenged by, what I think, and this is why we put this in the book as well, is about angels and waiting is thank you angels and guides for helping me maneuver this so that I can be the best parent to love them, to not judge them, but also to set up boundaries sometimes out of self-love, to know how to support but not enable because the mind doesn't really know how to do these things. It's a powerful tool, but it doesn't know the best way to move forward in these things. But this higher consciousness guiding you with love and assisting you can help you from the other side of the veil so that you not only know how to move forward as the best parent and how to support everyone involved in the best way, but that you're also, they download energies into you. They upgrade your software, so to speak, so that you're not triggered like you were before, so that things that your mind was getting stuck on 
you release. You don't go down those dark alleys. And if you do, you don't stay down them very, very long. So they're helping us move out of mind stuff, the fear and negativity. They're helping us shift more into a love-based response with more acceptance, compassion. We don't have to like it, but we accept this is what they're here to learn. And I think it's important to remember that we've all agreed to these things on a deep subconscious level, including wildlife who go through, you know, oil spills or wildfires we that we've all agreed to this because it's this intense learning experience here on this free will planet and these things are here to teach us so the question to ask is why is this here on my path how is it here to help me grow and then ask the guides to help the angels to help you with that to help you understand why it's here and to help you no longer need it so that you move beyond that and that's so important because people look at challenges and go oh gosh this is you know like they get all wrapped up in the challenge as opposed to looking at where the opportunity is. Right. Or they think they've made the wrong choice or they should have done something different. It's like, no, chances are your soul wanted you to go through that. That Again, this the guardian angel will step in to make sure that you don't if the soul doesn't intend for you to go down that path. But, you know, it, chances are you needed to go through that conditioning. You deliberately chose your family for the DNA. You are the way you are need to be for this journey, right? You are designed the way you need to be for this journey with the dark and the light in you. And so it's here to help you grow. And once you ex- understand that, it makes it a little easier to understand, okay, now I see that my um, my soul intends for me to learn deeper levels of forgiveness. And so I needed to come through this experience with somebody who provided opportunities to forgive, right? So that's what's happening. And when you understand that, it makes it a lot easier to let go of the mind stuff around it and to just have acceptance and to eventually find compassion, but at least acceptance, you know, rather than judging them or you. Yeah. And you can get into this place of just being and and get out of that judgment because the judgment's what really gets us kind of in trouble. Exactly. And it's no different than... It's it, it just an example. Say that you happen to be at a college level, so to speak, soul college soul level of um, self love. We don't judge those who are in the beginning primary classes of self love just because you're learning how to run and fly with it. We don't judge those who are, don't even have an they don't even have a desire to learn to crawl yet. That's okay. There is so much love here that there's no judgment. We're just all at different levels, all equal as souls, but different levels of growth and evolution. So you can look at it as, well, I'm grateful that I've mastered that, you know, that I don't need that in my life. And sometimes people will show up in your life. Family members are very deliberate because you can't get away from them as easily, right? You can't just quit that job, you know? (laughs) Um, So family members are very deliberately in your life and they might be there to show you what that looks like. If you chose to go down the path that they're going down so that you don't have to personally go through it, you can see that and make that choice. Of, okay, I, I choose not to be controlling or have a, you know an anger issue or whatever. You can watch it and make that choice. But if you need to go through it, fine. It, it, there's plenty of op- learning opportunities. You know, one thing I really appreciate about Angels in Waiting is that you have so many case studies, Mm -hmm. you know, in them. What is one that really sticks with you? You know, I think the way, and and this is why we devoted a whole chapter to it, is self-hatred. I think a lot of people have a hard time, especially in this culture, especially in the United States, loving ourselves exactly the way we are and recognizing that, um, you know, Sometimes you may have you may be coming in to master deeper levels of self love. So you may have been incarnated into a family who led you to believe you were not worthy or lovable exactly as you were. Cultural beliefs may lead you to believe you're not lovable exactly as you are, unless you buy this product or do this or that. And it's about learning how to find the love from within instead of having to find it outside of you all the time. And this is where, again, when you engage help from the other side with these angels, they can help you find that love. They can help you recognize that's just a cultural belief. It's a distortion of the mind. The mind is lying to me. The body doesn't lie, but the mind will lie to you. And and so they start helping you wake up to that 
and recognizing that and moving beyond it. Because I get a lot of people who come to me and they recognize that their mind's been sabotaging. They recognize that their mind is creating problems, but they don't know how to stop. So this is where when you allow the angels to help you, they can help you stop that type of behavior and shift it into a more consciously loving, accepting, compassionate, gentle, patient response. And we have to ask first. Yes, that's that is paramount. Yes. Yeah, they don't just don't show up and do a makeover on us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so what would be the point, right? I mean, mm-hmm. they're kind of like tutors, right? When you ask, you've got to do the work, you've got to take the class, so to speak, but they're tutors who are coming in and guiding you with tremendous love and guidance. Wouldn't it be awesome to have this amazing tutor who's just by your side 24-7 with tremendous love and operating out of your best interest? So I think it's important to remember, we're all in different classrooms. And I know that, you know, sometimes it's really easy to jump into somebody else's classroom and it's like, no, I think I've signed up for enough classrooms. I don't need to take that one on as well, right? (laughs) So I'm going to let that person learn that lesson because that's what they're signed up for. I've got other things that I've signed up for. And one of them is acceptance, recognizing that this is what it is right now, because right now there's this big shakeup to wake us up because we're resistant to change. And we don't want to, you know, we, we don't, we're not, we tend to be very distracted and not mindful of what's going on. So what's happening right now is the veil is being pulled back. So we see things more clearly. A lot of things that have been operating under the surface are coming to the surface. So it's, it's intensifying for a reason to help us wake up more easily, more consciously, but you have a lot of help from the other side to help you maneuver all of this and get you where you want to be. So the the book is about not just helping you um, create the desires, but also maneuvering through the struggles with a lot more ease, grace, and joy. So I know for our listeners now, they're probably going, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to get the book. What is one tip that they can take with them that will help them just kind of trust or maybe connect with their angels and guides? Okay. I think that um, that is that knowing you are tremendously loved, tremendously loved, and there is tremendously powerful assistance just waiting for you. So get let go of the expectation. I know I'm moving beyond one, Marianne, forgive me. I'm moving beyond one, but you know, let go of the mind's expectations and let them assist you in the way that's best. Okay. But yeah, you are so worthy of this love. You're designed to have this assistance. Absolutely. Go for it. That's okay. You can go on three and four. I, I just love hearing about all <laughs> this <laughs> because it, it makes so much sense. I mean, just like any relationship we have, we have to put work into it. You know, you yeah. may have some friends we hang out with here or there, but those real deep connections, those yeah. are things we actually cultivate. Yeah, you can't really nurture a relationship if you're tuning in every couple months, right? And then you just, you know, forget about it. It's about consistently becoming aware that they're there. So I encourage people to have a little angel statue out or a a picture that reminds you that they're there walking by your side, waiting to be of service, waiting to be asked. Because a lot of people tend to forget that's the big thing. Well, then find a way to remind yourself. Even it's a post-it note on the, you know, the bathroom. I'm a post-it queen. So, you know, my bathroom mirrors got post-its on it all the time. But start becoming more aware that they're there uh, waiting to assist, and that it does make a huge difference. It makes a huge difference that the mind is um, not always knowing the best way to maneuver these things. It's a powerful tool, but it doesn't always know how to move forward because it's designed to get the intuitive guidance from the other side. And a lot of people, and the world is kind of showing us what happens when the minds are in charge, not following that intuitive guidance or even aware that it's there. And the angels can help you become more aware of that and become more aware. And we talk, I talk in the book about how to strengthen that intuition so that you feel, it's like a muscle, and it, it, how to develop that so that it's much easier for you to connect. And they are, that's their job to connect to you. They are, they're, they're, most people miss the guidance. They miss that connection. But if they really need to get a message across to you, they'll get it across to you one way or the other. 
So if someone's, you know, they purchased the book, they've really kind of decided, hey, I, I want to do something that's more in depth. Do you have like webinars or certain things that they can sign up for? There's a lot of information on my website at holeswellness.com, H-O-L-Z. W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S.com. There's a lot of free information up there because my passion like yours is to get this information out there to help people in as many ways as possible. It's also about healing, um, you know, the Aboriginal principles and, 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 but there's an awful lot of information on the blog section about angels, how they communicate with us, how they uh, commonly uh, leave signs for us. Um, there's just a lot of information up there to help people. So, you know, angels, Angels and Waiting is a good start, whether you are just starting out or you already have a relationship, but you want to take it further, um, that there is more information up there on my website. Well, Robbie, we could talk for hours. I just loved your work. <laughs> I mean, I, I obviously, I mean, this book, I think, is just so impactful. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure, Marianne. Well, it has been such an honor to have you here, Robbie, and to talk about the work you're doing. We're going to be having you back in another couple of weeks to talk about the rest of the books you have. I cannot wait. If you'd like to connect with Robbie and learn more about her work, you can at her website, holeswellness.com, and that's spelled H-O-L-Z wellness.com. There she has a free webinar on six ways you may be stopping healing. I know a lot of times when we consider healing, we never think that there may be things we're doing that's blocking that from happening. She also has a free report, Three Keys to Unlock Your Ability to Self-Heal, and many other topics that are so relevant for what we're going through today, helping us navigate the storms in life so that we can take charge and be more in control. If you're looking to pick up a copy of Angels in Waiting, it's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And if you don't see it on the shelf, ask for them to order it. And of course, support our indie bookstores. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.